when I okay. But you so, try your clothes on when you before you buy them. Okay, so there's a few things I do every <laughs> single day. Okay, I, that I would ha- I essentially have to see. Okay, okay. No, number one is. I do my beard every single day. I trim it. Mm-hmm. I shave it. I don't I make do that sure it's dark. lined up. Well, it doesn't look like you do it at all. <laughs> I didn't do it today. I didn't do it today. It doesn't look like you do any of it at all. I didn't do it today. I do that every day. So I, lights have to be on. Okay. When I get ready, the, the moment I get ready, I, you have to look in the mirror and make sure it looks fine. So mm. well, how would I get ready in the dark? Why would I do that? I could turn the lights on, put my clothes on, look at myself in the mirror. Yeah, Make sure I look I presentable. I look at myself in the mirror, but I don't get ready in the dark. That's the whole expression I was getting on. Wait, you, yeah, but I mean, I don't I get, get ready in the like getting putting the clothes on doesn't require light. But if I'm doing that all pretty much in one sequence, why wouldn't the light already be on? Right? How do you know what you're picking? But how are you benefiting from the oh, light? Yeah. I mean, no Question. room is ever pitch black. I'm not talking about unless you have blackout curtains or something. But what do you do? You lay your clothes out right by your bed every day, and then you just in the dark, you you half asleep. So I wake up a Sunday morning. Wake up. (laughs) Yeah, give me a play by (laughs) play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wake up. Please tune in. I go shower. I go sometimes the day before. I go. I think I'm wear that shirt tomorrow. I think I'm wear that that whatever. And it's all in your drawers and stuff. No, yeah, it's all there. I mean, I hang my pants in my um in my in my shirts right there in my closet. Okay. So I go shower, get ready. Um, brush my teeth, do all the things in the bathroom. Uh-huh. Then okay. I go back to my room, open okay. my dark. closet, dark. dark room. No light. Not pitch black room now. So I know the shirt. I know the cut. I know the seams. I know the... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so I, 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 I gave this guy a microphone. I open my closet <laughs> and I grab my clothes. And then I huh. put them right. on. And currently right now, uh, not a single light has been turned on. In so the room. The Lord's you know light. Natural irony. light. Huh. Natural light. It's all ironed and pressed, sweetie. Wow. <laughs> it's all ready. Right? We're southern now. It's, 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 it's ready to go. Whoa. So then, sweetie. So then come. come. Wait. So sure. But if there's natural light in the room, then it's not dark. But it's, We're I mean, talking yeah. about it's darkness. Blackout current. It's not a pitch black room, but I'm not, I could see. That's all I'm saying. There must be some light because huh. I can see a little bit. A little, Interesting. Okay. So then this I go. I know that shirt. I know yeah. those pants, and I know those shoes because I don't. I don't have thirty pairs of shoes. You, Are those the black and white ones or the black and green ones? It's I don't. You know, in the bathroom after. Like yeah, after right before changed. I walk out the house, there's the sins already made though. I'm not. I mean, very rarely do I go. Oh, there was a stain on that shirt that didn't get washed out or whatever. Like some freak accident, I catch on that last pass through. <laughs> Stop by the mirror, go. Dang, you look good, Jermaine. <laughs> God is the good affirmations. Yeah, he he you the are special. Yeah, for sure, he yeah. doesn't do. <laughs> I don't do some <laughs> affirmations. I, I be seeing him. I right right now. His hair ain't kept. Oh my his beard ain't kept. Hey, you know what? Uh, uh, his, uh, his shirt has two holes. In let me it. see. This, is, is that on purpose? Is that on? Okay. <laughs> it's hard to tell. That's what's up. <laughs> He's got two holes on his That's, shirt. Hey. He's he probably, hard. Let me. See. Okay, here's the judge. Show me your socks right now. Both socks. Both feet. Both Let's feet. Not the toes. Show me your socks. Nike sock. Bam. Okay. We got a black, one black Nike sock. Let's go. Two black. Okay. okay you're match. wearing matching socks. Let's go. This one's a tricky With one. cream shoes. I mean, a little Be, weird. No, but. I had to go. I had to go cream <laughs> shoes because I'm wearing a purple shirt. So what do I do? Purple, purple. shirt. No, so socks. Nice jeans. Up. You need white socks with the, with, oh, with so, the shoes but, you're but wearing But the shoes right are a good option. So, shoes are fine. Cool. It's the fact that you put black socks on it. The socks need to match the shoes. I don't have to really, it's not necessarily match the shoes. It's just when you're wearing black socks, it has to be for very specific reasons. Really? Yeah, like what? Like what kind of reason? Like I only own black. Like it has to be able to. Like it has to be able to. Yeah, you need some white socks, bro. You get what? what? There's hemming pants, and then there's what Gabriel does to his pants. You hem your pants? (laughs) Just, just I've only done one from the person you sent me to. Yeah, so far she's dope, bro. You know, she's like Albanian or something. You know how I take? You know I take your guys' style and your fashion tips very serious. Okay. And I go into my own life. You guys, and I isn't make me changes. and Nancy? Is that what you're saying? Because <laughs> you. I know you're not talking to Gabriel. No, you, uh, <laughs> you, you, Pastor Nathan. Pastor Nathan. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And when I hear the things happening, sounding off, mm-hmm. I'm just uh, like a sponge. I'm taking it, calling my you're tailor, learning. Falcon okay. Falcon Ridge Tailors. Hey, wow. I got six coming at you right now. When can you get it? <laughs> boom, 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 boom. When did this transformation happen? I just the last two years. He did it on the podcast. Yeah, I, I declared it on the podcast. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember that early, conversation. Early, but probably, I didn't know that's when it started. Oh, yeah. Probably about start. 60 days into mm-hmm. the first podcast yeah. launch. And people go, oh, oh, you. 
<laughs> I'm like, man. I knew having Jermaine on today would just be a riot. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm done. I'm done. No, oh, no. I'm done. Keep I'm going. Come keep on. Going. Welcome to Beyond the Letter, everybody. We got, obviously, we got Jermaine in the house today. Jermaine, Pastor Adam, Gabriel, yeah, Give us the team. intro. You, you're on the co host seat. So well, you can, uh, let's go. You can lean on anything. You can host anything. Sick. Well. What was I? What was I saying? <laughs> you are talking about clothes? You said just. Uh, oh yeah, fashion. Yeah, I'm on. I'm a man on a mish. I want right. to change the way I dress. I want to think about it. I want to. Great. Arti- be but you get dressed in the dark. <laughs> yeah, but that's my whole point. As I've been in this journey, I go. I don't think he does. No. Yeah. Ask I don't Jasmine. Think so. I think. Ask I think Jasmine. we just don't. Jasmine. I think, I think we're talking. Yeah. Yeah. We don't understand know. in the dark. You yeah. think in the dark. We. I think don't go like this. I can't get ready right now because the lights are off. I don't do that. But there's light in the room. L- like light from, the, from light. The, like the sun is out. You're not getting. You have blackout curtains, so the sun could be out, but it's a dark room. Wow. W- which then would be weird. It's just weird at that. I point. just like the dark, yeah. man. It's just I would love to know <laughs> in the comments. Does anyone else get ready in complete darkness? Yeah, because this whole thing was the like, same. What are you, Bane, Batman? <laughs> like, what, what are you? Just turn the light on. <laughs> this whole conversation <laughs> started because that whole thing where people go, "What did you do? Get ready in the dark." And I go, dude, look at Batman, bro. But I have, I have caught <laughs> you. I've Batman. caught you on multiple occasions, not wearing stuff that matched. And so, you have said on multiple yeah, occasions, yeah. this is a different blue than I thought it was because I got ready. <laughs> yeah. You said that before. Oh my gosh. I have, you said I that. And, so, I, and I go, I know. I can tell. It looks so like you got thing, ready. In the here's dark. the thing. No, you said this one time. <laughs> one time, because sometimes I try some risky stuff because I watch. I'm watching. Yeah. I go, wait. And I should do this, but I don't. Yeah. Oh, Pastor Nathan didn't match his outfit. He did a he did a this and a that, but yeah, it, yeah. it worked. Analyze. So I'm like, oh, that I should time. go, but then I should go. Hey, why did you do that? How? What was right, your thought? Because, right, right, yeah. like, for example, I wore this purple shirt one time with like black and blue Jordans, <laughs> and we all made fun and, of you. Yeah, yeah, and I got clowned on for it. But then I go, <laughs> lesson learned. Don't do that. <laughs> Right. Don't be risky. <laughs> oh, no, 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 in that way, because you have to have well, intentionality. You don't, have, you don't have to match. It's just it has to still be in the color block family is yes. what it is. So that's the difference. Have you heard you know? of this lady? Like you could wear brown and black together. Have, it, just, it just has to look mm, right. Have you ever done you know? this experience where you go to a lady who she analyzes your skin tone? And your, <laughs> no, I've never. That's like oh, in Korea. The color you know, there's one in San Diego who does it. We should do well, it. Well, there's probably someone local, but I'm saying it's like Wait, it's from Korea. And so Japan. she gives you your color palette yeah. and your season and and yeah, what you works sit down, for you. Yeah, right. You sit down right. She and puts these put, things put against, it up against your skin. Yeah. Whether something looks pale, makes and then, pale. and then she puts uh, you know Cloth silver and, and yes, gold yes. to tell you what your jewelry you know style should be mm-hmm. with your skin complexion. Yes. And then, Oh, yeah, I've seen. They're I, thought, big in, they're I think big you would have done that because you're so decided on your your style. Your I think that's something you would have done. Into my, I'm surprised into my that you haven't done like. it. Pastor Nathan hasn't done it. We, th- I would, I would say because you already we, know. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you gonna pay three hundred dollars to somebody? Because we figured that Tell out. Tell me something trial I don't know, lady. <laughs> trial and yeah. error over the years. Yes. But well, no, I wouldn't know. Like, like I don't have mentally in my head. Like, I know, I know, I, and... I know, I look good in yellow, or I know I look good in salmon. Like, I don't know, because that's what they do, is mm-hmm. they give you like seven approved colors that work for you, and then you basically just that becomes your wardrobe. Yeah. Like, I don't have that. I'll, I'll mm. dang, I'll wear. It's sick. That's you pretty know. sick. I yeah, can't yeah, lie. I think yeah. it's like three hundred fifty bucks, and she just spends like time like with you. And she provides the color palette to you, and it's a three hundred fifty yeah. bucks yeah. for the rest of and your life. And then they do your jewelry yeah. and all that too. And yes. Stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Pretty I would do it. That's I would. I think you should. Well, because I've been giving this purple shirt a shot. Is that I, pur- you keep saying purple. I mean, what is it? It's a little. Pur- it's, pur- it's like a burnt it's, salmon. It's, yeah, it's like it, it probably is burnt salmon. Is what well, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, it's burnt something. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I've I given think it a your shot. color is green. Your skin, your like su- a forest olive green makes yeah, your eyes thank stand you. out. Yeah. Thank you. You probably you already have a pink skin complexion. Yeah. So probably so that type of pink on pink. Like work. I bet a pink works for you. Probably did not, I, but I think it looks fine. Yeah, it looks fine. You, you know, but it doesn't stand out. So and I'm not trying to be hard on myself. I'm just trying to be a little objective, a little about, realistic. Yeah. The, 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 your your wife mm. recently got mad at you, right, Gabe? Yeah. But you know, we had a, we had a whole a conversation. Story. Yeah. About shoe choices. Because you wear Vans every day of your life, right? Like, <laughs> like you were born. Vans you were born. I was, you I, was born I was born off the walls. 
<laughs> you were born with a lifetime uh, subscription. Right, you right, came right, out right. of your mother's womb wearing right. a pa- pair of Vans. You right? were so a data point. Slip on. You were a data point for Vans the day you were born. <laughs> it was revenue they knew they had. It was like evolution. We got a lifer. <laughs> we got a lifer. Evolution was proof. <laughs> in and out in Vans went chick ching with Gabe no. when he was born. Okay, we just had this. Uh, this dude's got an in and out t-shirt on and socks on the regular. Wait, so what happened it's with like your guys. wife? What, what was the argument? Oh, we're good. She gave we're him good. some honest <laughs> feedback. <laughs> yeah, I want to hear the we're honest okay, feedback. She just gave him no, some she, really healthy, she, she honest communication. She gave me some feedback yeah. about wanting me to put on some Nikes, yeah. which mm. I never, never really gravitated towards. I always felt like they were bulky or they were just too... Oh, I yep. see. I like the Vans because they, they shaped my foot or whatever it was. Um, but yeah, that and then got clowned on once by the boys. And that, uh, that, uh, <laughs> I, but, that changes, hey, but that changes lives. It <laughs> does. <laughs> hey, Don't that's the strength. <laughs> Let's oh, go. He has he's the Nikes, Nikes on. Bro, they down don't down. even match his shirt. But he's <laughs> <wearing Yeah>. <laughs> They're black and white. Oh, those are good. Oh, yeah, well, you got them. You said white pair. Okay, you're you? wearing them. So how did she word this? Yeah, tell well, tell, yeah, tell us for newlywed here. couples, right? You're, you're only you're only within about ninety days of marriage. You're longer now, but at the time, yeah. or maybe five yeah, months into marriage, yeah. She gave you a little a little a little fashion feedback. Yeah, how well, because like, well, we were we were out shopping, and I was trying on some pants and stuff like that and she she was giving she was being honest with me which you know I love being honest and mm-hmm. she was like those shoes just don't really go with those pants like it just Ooh. doesn't it doesn't really yeah. work like you really should be putting on some Nikes or whatever. We go to the store and I try on some. Yeah. And I Were you actually, deeply offended by that? that like, like, no. Like, especially the Nikes part, not just her not saying Not the Nikes pick. part. Well, I mean, it's it's the whole, it, it was the shape of the shoe. In my mind, I was like, Nikes are bulky and yeah. I don't like that. Mm-hmm. Can we rewind but, though? Was there like a pre, like a passive aggressive version of these statements coming out? From or, her? Or was it just like action based? Less, I, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I don't think. Like not she's like, never made not funny she wasn't making like funny funny comments. No, she was. That, that was literally all she would say. Right that doesn't okay, really cool. go with that. Like, it doesn't really go. Like you, yeah. you would look so good in Nikes. You would look. Mm. And I was like, oh, well, they're bulky. And so we go to the We're store bulky. and I try them on. I try. I try on um, like some other pairs. And then yeah. I get to uh, what do they call Jermaine? The um, the first pair of Nikes I bought. Because these ones are my second. Oh, the Nike SBs? <laughs> no, 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 no. He no. got the, uh, Blazers. Blazers. Got Blazers. Oh, Blazer. Blazers. I was like, oh, these are, these, yeah. these, these are aren't bulky at all. Yeah, yeah they're yeah, super yeah. slim. These look like bottom. <laughs> I just bought a pair of Blazers. Bottom. Today. Bottom. And so yeah. that was, the, that was the yeah. gateway shoe mm-hmm. into there. And then, then mm-hmm. it started, oh, okay, I'll get these, uh, these, Jordan these dunks or, yeah, 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 okay. exactly. But she was going for you to get dunks specifically. First, first, first. Because that's what, by the time it got to me and Jasmine, because we do life together, we always running this stuff and we're out like just kind of shopping around or just looking around we weren't really dedicated shopping that day but just spending time together walking yeah. around and then that's where it came up and we got deep into it but that was the whole spiel was well those aren't my style yeah because you threw him under the bus you're the one who told yeah. me he refuses yes. to wear yeah because that day he shoe. goes well it's those are accountability my st- nancy <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I well because he that. goes these, those aren't my style <laughs> and we're like about ready to buy these shoes for him like not we buy them but just to get it yeah. he's gonna get them yeah. he's like well they're not my style and i go bro well that's the issue <laughs> not in a bad way <laughs> but the issue is your style because that's what made me step out if i don't get something or like if you ask bro why'd you get what why'd you get that shirt well, it's it's my style, but your style can only get you so far before you go out of your own style and try something new. Well, my whole premise is, and I think this is what I told you, Gabe, was like, bro, just do what your wife right, right, wants right, you right, to do. Right. She wants you. She thinks you look good in Nikes. Wear right, some right. stupid Nikes. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. it's your wife. Just wear like You're wear what. Right, 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 right. Just do what right, your wife. Right, right. Uh, you know, uh, and I'm not one that like I. Uh, you know, I'm not one that's like. You know, happy wife, happy life. I'm not right, that guy. Right, right. But in the sense of like, if your wife goes like, "Oh, I like your your facial hair this way," or "I like your shoes this right. way," or "I like when you wear the," just do it. What is it? What does right, it matter? Right, right. You know, like. Right. And I I always make fun of like, because I'll talk to guys all the time, and they'll be like, "I'll be like, bro, cut your hair." I'm like, well, my wife likes it, and I'll be like. I guarantee you, if you cut your hair, your wife is going to say, thank God. Oh, no, no. No, she won't. Then they cut their hair and they're like, hey, man, first thing my wife said was like, oh, thank God. I'm like, I, I know I know that's what your wife felt. Yeah. I I know that. Is. I think you got caught one time with Jasmine. You told me something Jasmine was fine with. I'm like, bro, go just go do it. Go cut your, shave your beard and see what she says. And she's like, 
Oh, thank God yeah. you shaved it. I'm like, what? Yeah, something like that. They're gonna it tell you, quite that. you know, it wasn't that, but it <laughs> yeah, was something yeah, yeah. like, no, for you, sure. They, they, no, they may not always want to tell you the truth, or they do, and you just, well, for whatever reason, mm-hmm. don't do we it. just men just disregard it. But yeah, I'm like, for sure. just do, you, your wife, you know, wants you to wear skinnier pants. Go wear skinnier pants. Would you buy wear a jacket out to dinner? But get yeah. a jacket on. Like, what? How is that? And same thing for ladies. <clears throat> oh yeah, same I thing mean, for ladies. Yeah. Yeah, the other day I just think right. my, I didn't think men uh, articulate. Men are normally most of the time yeah, they're I'm, like, yeah. I don't care. Like, how do you like my nails? I don't care. Yeah, that's <laughs> you know, right. like a lot of guys are more like. But do you, you guys deep down have time, a preference you know? though, and just don't say it, or you really don't? I mean, I'm sure some men do care. But there are some things I'm very or? preferenced on. Like, but there's hair, a lot of things I'm not. Like, yeah, like style. I'm not preferenced at all with Ashley's hair. I'm not preferenced at all with her nails. Like that makeup, stuff, no makeup, makeup. No, like oh, we're less. When the conversation comes up, like this was a this was one that Gabriel knows was had. Conversation with Jasmine always at some dinner. We always have this like feedback oriented conversation where it's oh, nice. not high emotions. Just what's something I do? What what's a, yeah. what would you like oh, to see me good. wear? We just have those kind of yeah. conversations that are meaningful, but in a casual setting, so mm-hmm. the truth could come out nicely. <laughs> um, <In> and <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, one time she goes, "What's something that you would like to see me wear more?" I said, well, you know, there was this one time we went on vacation to Florida and you wear these mom shorts and I love them because I love your legs and mm-hmm. it's still modest, but shorts, you get to have your cake and eat it too. The whole thing. Mm-hmm. I go, <laughs> what a man, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, boy. <laughs> I go, and I love to see it. <laughs> those are coming back in style. Just by the way. I want some of those. Yeah. Hard and I love goes. to see it. And <laughs> yeah. she goes, well, okay, I know I don't like shorts. So I go, hey, you going to wear shorts now after this conversation? <laughs> <laughs> and so I get her some like legging biker shorts because she was going to cycling yeah. class. I go, I'm oh, going to yeah. get you yeah, yeah, yeah. the perfect thing. Didn't wear them. <laughs> Called my boy. Got on the phone with him and his wife. Hey, y'all, Jasmine, she's not she's not holding to she's the. She's not respecting me. Yeah, she's my not. Authority. Let's all talk about it. <laughs> They're like, my Jasmine, leadership. you better wear these shorts. <laughs> oh, whatever. Stubborn. Took a while. <laughs> she hits me up yesterday or like two days ago. Hey, you're going to like this. I go, what? So I'm going to Abercrombie tomorrow because they just got some new mom shorts. And I'm going to go Let's check go. them out. <laughs> Let's go. Let's baby. go, baby. win. It's... <laughs> So is this marriage life? Yeah, it's, is this it's what so I'm gonna? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll say that's healthy know. marriage life. Yeah. You know? yeah, 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 yeah. That's good. My greatest joy in the planet. I've I, I met two new guys recently, where they said, "Hey, Pastor, I'm you like my beard." I'm like, "Yeah, your beard's nice. It's fine." <laughs> <laughs> they're, like, they're like, "Well, I listened to one of the old podcasts, and I heard how you oh, like yeah. have no respect for a man who's unkept." And so I started like. Yo. I started like, I went and got a haircut, went and got my beard. And I'm like, yeah, you look fantastic. You look great. And then like the girlfriend or the wife would be right there. And I'm like, oh, yeah, he's really changing, changing. life. That's my greatest changing joy in life. life. Makes it's, a difference. It's to see men appreciated when they appreciate themselves. Yes. You know, there's all these women that need to treat themselves. But I'm mm-hmm. like, guys, hey, you appreciate yourself. Right. Go, don't be like Jermaine right now. <laughs> Line your beard up. Yes. Do your hair. Get a yes. haircut. Mm-hmm. You know. Yes. And then That's and then you'll on. and then you'll see everyone else will will light up when you walk yeah. by. You One know? thousand percent. But when you go to a meeting looking like this guy right now, <laughs> so they're not gonna take you. Tell serious. me this. Explain. Tell me yeah. this. I'm not gonna explain <laughs> myself. I, I I have a haircut coming up. Thank God. All right. <laughs> Tell me this though, because sometimes it's all you have to say next time. What? I got an event coming up and I'm in between haircut cycles, so I'm yeah, trying to get it closer to the event. Don't mm. say, but it's not true. I, I'm giving it to you, <laughs> but that's the move you say. When someone's like, "Hey, your hair's a little long." Oh, well, I'm in between Man, cuts. Yeah, so I sorry. Got mm-hmm. Dang, but that that's person, you know, <laughs> that first person who says that, they're crazy. Like your hair's a little long. <laughs> who well, is that? The thing is, because I get a haircut every week, and so whenever I go long, I do hear it from people. They're like, "Hey, mm. I've never seen your hair." like that before and i'm like and then i feel like i have to they keep you in myself. check dude yeah like oh well, i got i just came back from vacation so i don't have a cut till friday and it's monday that's you know, what like that's that kind of stuff that's what i've been telling yeah. you but i'm excited to see it because i don't know how you're going to figure this situation <laughs> what? out what is sabbatical pastor adam going to look like dude i don't know i'm kind oh. of against the sabbatical right now yeah. i know you've been, uh, uh, you've, been uh, you've been rebelling you've been rebelling what We'll see. It's Touchy gonna be subject. pretty Let's dope, pretty on. pretty rustic. You're gonna find some local barbers. Or... No, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing yet. Would you ever let Ashley cut your hair? 
Heck no. <laughs> I used to cut my own hair back in, in my early 20s. I'd do it with a mirror. I'd cut my own hair. Did you and have then, a mohawk uh, or something crazy like that? I had at a one faux point? Hawk. Yeah. Faux yeah. Mohawk and faux hawk. A couple things. Yeah, yeah. I got Would you guys let times. your wife t- touch your hair? Like cut it and she try could touch it? it. She, I mean, not, not touch it. <laughs> <laughs> touch it all you want, girl. No, not, no. Let's <laughs> If, it, I, if Ashley it, wanted it. to learn how, and we went and like when we moved to Costa Rica or something, <laughs> yeah, right, 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 right. But I by mean, then, I'd probably do like a number three. Uh, yeah, yeah, I yeah, hope yeah, my yeah, future like, man lets me. It, I don't know. I, I want to like just you try wanna it cut out. You think oh, you can no. like perform yeah. a fade? Yeah. You think you could yeah, like fade could and totally taper? Fade it out and taper it. Because you've done it before. You've like you've no, but that's important. To have a willingness to learn it is important. Well, anyone can learn it. It's not to do it well is very hard, but it's not rock and sight. And it's like bald spot. (laughs) That would be really bad. Well, you look at my barber plus entry dot level barbers. They're totally different Mm -hmm. haircuts. So, yeah, anyone can learn how to cut hair. It's not hard, but to do it like incredibly well is very hard. Mm -hmm. But anyone can learn it. It's not like it's not impossible. Oh, okay. It's just to do it like some of these guys who do it in pe- like I, I you know I, I've been getting my hair cut for so long I could tell it when someone has yeah, an inexperienced you barber mm, okay. you can normally see the lines you can see where the fake starts and ends yeah. and stuff like that but maybe do an average girl who didn't probably pay attention that much you think you know oh, a yeah. barber who's been doing it 15 years to one who just started yesterday you might not like oh it looks like a, a haircut it's just yeah it's, but everybody's different whereas for us guys when girls get their hair done we're like oh what changed, you know, <laughs> yeah. unless they change the whole style. But a lot of times they're like, you like my hair? I cut it two, I cut two inches off. And they're like, like, oh, where? <laughs> I don't. But then their friend will see me like, oh my gosh, girl, what'd you, you got do? Layers. Take three, yeah, what'd you do? Take three what, inches off? What made off? you get, get the confidence yeah. to cut it that much? <laughs> yeah. And you're sitting there like, what just oh, happened? Shoot. <laughs> yeah, so I guess funny. with our hair, you can't really tell unless it's like a drastic cut. Because yeah, yeah, I've always yeah. wanted to do like the short, I call it the mom cut, where it's like super short. Yeah. Mm. Not until like I have thing. kids. Jasmine just yeah. went for that look. You really do need kids to, for the mom cut. Yeah. I feel like, I feel I like, bet, I feel huh? like everybody, every woman has that mom hair. Ashley did hers once, too. She's like, it's yeah, super Jasmine, super that's short. the era she's yeah. in right now. Yeah. Era, mom nice. shorts. You were going to ask cut. me something. What were you going to ask? Oh, yeah, I was going to You never answered it. Oh, the sabbatical. Yeah. What's the oh, sabbatical? That was, oh, that was question. Question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm undecided right now. You mm. know, like a like stockholders a, are watching. Like, this. <laughs> <laughs> like a high school, like a high schooler deciding the where the uh, to go to college. Yeah. I'm, I'm going undecided right now on what's, what's going to happen. Stock drops to five percent. All right. Yeah, that was it. I just wanted to know. No, that's good. There's different iterations, different possibilities. Yeah, I'm I'm undecided on what sabbatical is going to look like. Have you guys ever had or long, long hair? <clears throat> Like to the point where I mean, you were telling yeah, me Jermaine earlier had that hair. Jermaine, yeah, Jermaine yeah. had hair like at least I to did, his shoulders, yeah. at least to your shoulders. Yeah, it upped my shower time by ten That's minutes crazy. at least. Easy. I mean, hair like yeah. that. junior high, I had long-ish hair, maybe like down to here. My dad, the reason was my dad wanted to see what I looked like with long hair. That was the only really? reason. I hated it. I was in junior <laughs> high. I hated it. And my That's dad was funny. like, I just want to know what you look like with long hair. And so he like wouldn't take me to Fantastic Sam's <laughs> until finally on my Bro. eighth grade graduation. I beg, I'm like, please, I hate my hair. It was like came down to like here, you know, like that was, it the was tough like probably part. here. I hated it. Yeah, yeah, my family hated me during like serious occasions or funerals because I had such long hair. With the yeah. beanie on. <laughs> and there's nothing you can do. I mean, yeah, like, it just looks inappropriate. What can you do? You put in a ponytail. and Yeah. yeah. So it keeping just, yourself up. I think really adds like attractiveness to you, you know, whether having your haircut, putting yourself together, oh, for sure. your outfits, cologne, perfume, even if it's a little bit, it's just like adds like so many points. But, Not yeah. that you're trying to walk yeah. around to be like, oh, I'm attractive, but sure. I think it's just, you know, presenting yourself. I well. think when you take yourself seriously, other people take you seriously. Yeah. You know, that's a good point. And yeah, there was, yeah. we, we had a, I had a meeting today with some of our architects and contractors for a project we're doing across the street. And one of their contractors came in a suit and tie, which normally contractors, construction workers are like oh, wow. in boots and blah, blah, blah. And so uh, I was kind of making fun of him a little bit on the front end because I he introduced himself and all the rest of the lead construction team who are who like we worked with before. They're all kind of in like kind of work polos with their work logo on and one of the mm. you know contractors or he was an engineer contract I, I forget what he was what he introduced him, but he was wearing a really nice kind of over jacket he had a tie dress shirt and I and I just looked at I said today whatever you say I'm taking serious because <laughs> you look at very nice yeah, and he man. was like oh thank you for noticing you know like mm-hmm. he like really perked up but I but it was serious for me I was like oh this meeting is important to him 
mm-hmm. because yeah. it wasn't even a meeting where you we were all in our in a construction site like yeah and i'm wearing what i'm wearing right now but like just a nice hoodie but he was just like he had a tie dress shirt and i just thought to myself like man i respect that that yeah. you you re- you didn't you didn't have to dress like that you could you could have wore a construction polo with the company logo on it with but jeans but right. from what i'm gathering this meeting is important to you and so that then i took him that much more serious when he was doing not because he told me to or i felt like i needed to it was right. just like wow you really you know like you could tell he put on his best for the for this meeting and, mm-hmm. and so i really really respected it it showed me that that uh he cared yeah. you know and then the rest of the contracting team like they you know daniel and art and all them, their team was awesome because they brought they brought like it wasn't even asked but they brought coffee and they did all these other special things just to like mm. show like this meeting's important because i was just expecting us to get on like mm. a piece of wood table and just throw architecture plans mm. down and blah 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 but you could tell by them like really respecting the moment and then yeah. really treating the moment it elevated my intentionality to be like okay I'm really in this because mm-hmm. everyone else seems to care. And so I think that's from taking care of yourself or being prepared when you go to something or, you know, doing your best. We just said that recently, you know, people, so, someone recently came to a job interview with us and said they didn't even look into our church or anything like that. And you're like, oh, yes. and you don't you're like, you're like, Oh, what's the rest of the church name? I don't know. I'm just here for an interview. It's just like, well, yes. you're not, you're not going to be taken serious Wild. if you don't, if you don't put Wild. effort into, you know, those type of things. <laughs> and so, I just wonder nowadays, like, if someone doesn't get the job or get the client or whatever, like, did you really try your best? Mm-hmm. Maybe you did, but there might be a percentage where you r- could have done something a little more. Right. You know, For sure. You could have put a little more effort into either A, your appearance, or B, you know, uh, what it was that you were presenting itself. Um, yeah. No, that's yeah. It's, it's a crazy conversation because <clears throat> I cared a lot less. When I cared a lot less about how I looked... I, it was to me at that time, it was more of a protest on the status quo because I hated that. Yeah, it yeah, seems so superficial. What a rebel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it was crazy, <laughs> but it's always this conversation that comes around to like people saying, Oh, you see a billionaire. They never dress nice. They just wear, oh, they wear, t- and I'm like, Yeah, but that's not the <laughs> standard. Not but. but that's not the standard. Yeah. Like a billionaire and a young man trying to build a future and a career and g- gain credibility and influence. Those are two different people in two radically different places in their life. Mm-hmm. And so to use that millionaire, billionaire conversation, you know, people with real money never wear suits. You know, people, and it's like, well, that's well, not the that's standard. Not but and that's it's not also true. not true. Exactly. But yeah. media, you see Elon Musk go out looking like a normal old casual Jack Yeah, but or the Mark jeans Zuckerberg. he's wearing are $3,000. Yeah. And, sure. the, and the <laughs> blank tee, and the, and the, the, the Bruno, the Bruno Cicicelli shirt he's wearing, it's a t-shirt made out of wool that's worth five grand. Like, crazy. They don't, they, like, you know, yeah, like. Oh look, look! Uh, Jeff Bezos you know, Bill just... Gates is wearing Skechers, but he has a three hundred million dollar yacht. Like they spend their money on things they care about. Mm. Billionaires who are nerds don't care about how they look, but billionaires who are nerds care about having a twenty million dollar computer in their home that mm. someone made. They all have something, unless oh, you're literally sure. Warren Buffett, who he he really is probably one of the rarest people that like spends no money on anything like almost has no luxuries at all mm-hmm, still mm-hmm. has his original house he had in the 80s Crazy. you know drives a 19 you know so 90 crazy. or eating whatever. at mcdonald's yeah gets a mcdonald's <laughs> bacon egg and cheese every morning like he just but that's because he loves to win and so the more money he has to him that feel that's value so he does spend his money he spends his money he buys a billion dollar bill a, a company that's his idea that and that's his idea of feeling good about himself where someone else may be like oh winning in business isn't my biggest thing i like buying a new car that's expensive that's what makes me feel like i'm winning in business for warren buffett buying another business makes him feel like Jeez. he's winning in business wow yeah. so whenever people use those tears now yeah people who are head to toe wearing a gucci matching gucci jacket gucci track pants or whatever like yeah i get what they're saying you know you probably aren't spinning mm. out of excess you're spinning out of what you need but Mm-hmm. That overall, like, look, billionaires don't wear nice things. Yes, they do. Mm-hmm. You just don't know the brands. Of wild. Them. But, no, that's yeah, wild. Yes, they do. Right. Yes, they do. That's <laughs> like, crazy. Yeah. I never thought about that, too. The, <laughs> the basic things doing they doing have that. are just not basic at all. No. Yeah, it's crazy. No. And the more Mark Zuckerberg has, like, gotten in shape and took in stuff, you tell it, like, you can see he's, like, increased his standard of, like, what he wears mm-hmm. to what he used to when he was just kind of a computer nerd. Now, yeah. Now he, like... 
is into other things. He does like jujitsu and all that. And so as his figure and he's gotten stronger and more muscular, you could tell like his fashion has changed. So for so many years, they would show a picture of Mark Zuckerberg and some Adidas and a t-shirt and be like, this is a billionaire. But now you show him, he's got like tailored t-shirts he's wearing and, Mm. you know, like really nice jeans. But to an average person, they may still think they're Wranglers. They're not. So, you know, the more confident the person has in themselves, they'll tend to invest in themselves more. But a lot of those billionaires, they even though they're billionaires, they may not have personal confidence. That's mm. a, an element, too. A lot of them actually are highly depressed and highly self-conscious of themselves, um, which is why a lot of them have, you know, so many relational issues. They have a relational issue with their kids, spouses, mm. ex-spouses, all that stuff, because there is a personal <clears throat> issue with their own view of self. Yeah. They just happen wow. to be good at business. You know, um, right. they still got issues. <laughs> right. Just like us. Like everybody else. <laughs> yeah, right. Right, right, right. Like everybody else. That's so crazy. <laughs> yeah. All right. Speaking of which, I got a video. Ooh. I'm trying to decide which one I want to do. Um, they all were in the area of faith. Did you see all of them, Gabe? I saw I saw two of them. You one of them, of them? I, I, I just kind of read it and then sent it to Andy. All right. Let me let me decide the one, the one I want us to, uh, the one I want us to look at. I'm pulling up. To, I refuse uh, to watch them just so I can have a. Yeah, I saw one. I try to show. Well, Jermaine, there's but... the one. I mean, it could be. This is a lighthearted episode today. <laughs> it's a funner episode. So I have some like science and evolution stuff ones. But then I have the one that's recently gone viral, which is really funny. <laughs> and Alize is in here too, so she may need a, a headset because you've seen it too. But this is a, and Andy, you know which one this is. This is the Gen Z Bible translation. So there's the pastor that shared about the new translation. <laughs> I don't know if he AI built it. I don't know if it's a real translation. He presents it at, as if it is, but that might right. just be for a sermon point that he's making. But there's a pastor who shared a quote from... Have you seen this? The yeah, I've seen it. Okay, so they've taken the Bible and they've put it in terms that Gen Z will understand. Okay, so it's the Gen Z translation <laughs> oh, of shoot. the Bible. And the, the, this pastor on one of his weekends, he shares the translation with his church. It since has gone viral. It's pretty funny, but mm-hmm. it's. Uh, I think it just... I think it just is likened to... I think this is the first generation, for the most part, from what I understand, has their own set of language. Like millennials, Gen Xers, baby boomers. Like there's loose, like there's like, yeah, yeah, like there's loose, like from the 1970s, groovy and stuff. Like there's loose slang terms. But like when you do talk to someone who's from Gen Z, a lot of times, I really don't understand half of what they're saying. Right. Like, yeah, I have to, like, yes. like I need a, yeah, yeah. yeah, I need like a yeah. full yeah. translation. Yeah, the Gen Z vocab is vast. It's very vast. To just other loose slang statements, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, yeah, you could assemble um, a whole sentence with with exactly, and, 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 and they do it in this Bible. So I feel like this is the first oh, recent ge- generation that like has their own set Dictionary. verbiage, <laughs> you know, a full contexted language, right? So. Andy, whenever you're ready for it, go ahead and play it. Recently, I did hear about a new translation out called the Gen Z Bible, where someone had taken the scriptures and translated it into Gen Z language. Now, I'm going to read part of this. I do want to let you know I would never dishonor God's word. I have triple checked this to make sure this is exactly what Luke 1 communicates when the angel talks to Mary. Check this out. Mary was a pick-me girl for God and was simping for him in prayer when the angel Gabriel appeared to her and said, Ayo, you're a real one and the top G is feeling you. But she thought his compliment was sus and gave him the side eye. So he said, so he said, baby girl, chill. God sent me to tell you you've passed his vibe check. And low key, he wants you to have the main character. You name him Jesus and they will all say he's him. He's him. He said, He's him. How can this be since I promised him my body count will always be zero? <laughs> Yo! Oh, no. He said, This ain't about cuffing season, for the Holy Spirit will live rent free in you, and your boy Jesus will be a divine bro. Yo! Your cousin Elizabeth is with child. She who is already older than a boomer, and her husband is way past beekeeping age. So Be- Mary said, Bet. Bet. Gabriel left her on red, and she let the Holy Spirit cook. <laughs> oh Bro. I have some thoughts. I have many thoughts. Oh, oh she's she ready. Ready. Oh, ready. Resident Gen Z. <laughs> Resident Gen Z got Let's the. Let's hear this. Okay, so okay. I've had this sent to me countless times. <laughs> wow. But I countless? Haven't, I haven't actually watched it fully through because I just thought it was silly. But okay. one of the like 
challenges that I found myself dealing with, because obviously I work in a place with people. Put the mic closer to your mouth. I've worked with people who are more successful, close, you know, working in a place like this. I've had to learn how to elevate my vocabulary and be mindful of who I'm talking to, because I feel like if I don't talk in a certain way, I won't be as respected. Whereas when I'm talking to someone who I have a little closer of a relationship with, like I could talk to Jermaine in a more casual conversation, whereas I'm not going to talk to someone in finance talking the way I normally do. So even with emails and stuff, I'll run it through ChatGPT and be like, hey, can you make this more <laughs> professional? Because I've never great. had a very professional vocabulary because obviously I've never been in a setting where I've had to. But also just the fact that someone even made that translation actually blows my mind because I don't think that our generation should be dumbing themselves down to understand something that's at an elevated level. Like they should elevate their mm. mindset rather than bring it down to you know, what we see the generation as understanding. Because then it just makes our generation look dumb when there's people who actually are trying to make something of themselves, you know, in a bigger space and yeah. have respect for themselves. Mm. That's a tricky that's one. A very, that's a very rich take. I got to <laughs> yeah, give you your props on that. Yeah, yeah that's say. crazy. And I was thinking about this the other day because <laughs> when you started working here at 19, you're 21 now, uh, which is still young, but 19 is very young yeah. to kind of start a career path kind of kind of gig and i remember i number one so i gotta give you your props because mm -hmm. i could tell how much of an effort you make in presenting yourself and talking and because i remember when you first started i used to be blown away by the comfort of stuff that you would say to like mm -hmm. me or nathan or what and it, honestly I, I was never offended by it, it was hilarious but <laughs> but 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 i would legitimately <laughs> think it's hilarious that you had you had almost no sense of filter. barrier or filter to what you were saying and how you were saying it. and almost that other people would look at you and be like I can't believe this girl just said this to the executive pastor or the lead pastor or whatever and I would I mean it would honestly it would it would, it would crack me up but I remember like probably one of your first months and I'm trying to remember exactly what it was but you said something either what I was wearing or something. And it was hilarious, but it was one of those things like other people look like, is she going to get in trouble for what she just said? And like, you don't do any of that stuff anymore, <laughs> which I miss it. Cause it was kind of, it was hilarious. Yeah. yeah but yeah. like, I it was thinking about it. Yeah. It had its own like, you know, like, oh, shoot, well, it's had its pocket. own like little sister charm to it. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah, Oh, yeah. she, she means well, like she's not, <laughs> it's not coming disrespectfully or whatever. Or it's like, Oh, Hey, trust me. If Gen Z are giving you that much flack, it's a compliment. Don't worry. You right, know, like, and right. I'm very much good with that. Like I use a lot of humor to compliment people. So I've always been good at that. But I was thinking about the other day. I was like, you know, Alizé don't really do that much stuff anymore, which then I reflect it was probably that she, she's trying. It's not that you've grown. They're like, oh, she's grown up. She don't talk like that anymore. It's like, no, I think you're genuinely you're genuinely trying to elevate the way you communicate and present yourself. And it shows. Yeah, yeah I sure. definitely have, because I've run into multiple times with just different people, not just, you know, within the office, but outside where they'll see me and. You know, if we talk in, in an email or over the phone or something, obviously they're not going to be able to tell my age unless they're like, oh, your, your voice, whatever. You know, because I tried to present myself in a way where I am more professional because I'm working with very professional people. And if I don't make myself a professional person, no one's going to respect my ideas or my creativity or think that I'm capable of working in the same room as them. And then I'll meet people and they're like, oh, you're so much younger than I thought you were. And I'm like, yeah, because I actively tried to not present myself in that way unless I'm comfortable around you. So like with Jermaine, I can send him, make fun of him, but then know like we can have a serious conversation and get ideas on the table. Whereas if I'm with someone else, they might not even think about what I have to say because they're like, oh, well, your age, you know, determines your level of knowledge or creativity or your ability to sit at this table with us type of deal. Not that you've ever done that or anything, but it has happened to me with people where I'm like, okay, I have to kind of hide some of my personality because it might come off in the wrong way of like, oh, she's not as smart as she thinks she is or she doesn't deserve a spot at this table. And those are insecurities that I've had to deal mm. with because being someone who's younger with no degree in a workspace like this where people have worked their entire lives to get here, sometimes it can creep up as an insecurity of like, maybe you don't deserve to be here. Maybe mm -hmm. someone else with higher value should sit in your spot, you know, even in meetings that we've had, things yeah. like that. Yeah. But I feel like that's what makes the difference here where it's like, I've seen your work ethic. 
Alizé. So I think like, yeah, talent is amazing. I think there's a, obviously a time and place for that. But it's just like the same thing with how Pastor Adam did with me. Like I did, I wasn't working necessarily in digital marketing, but I was still marketing. But he was like, hey, run with it. And I'll never forget what you said. It's like, I rather you go for it and me pull back than me put all these barriers and boundaries and be like, no, this, no, that, no, this. So I think we we're fortunate enough to be in an environment where we have the autonomy to be able to think creatively and not just think but execute creatively too so i think that makes a difference yeah. when you're in that healthy environment in the workspace you're like oh okay well i can take a chance on this and i'm not gonna get fired unless it's something yeah. wild or yeah, outrageous yeah. yeah but i think just you building that environment within this workspace with 19 sure. year old or a 31 year old like me it's like oh wow i have that that freedom you know that autonomy to yeah. be able to build mm -hmm. and i think i think the climate I think most leaders need to be aware enough to know that the climate that we're in in 2024 is, um, you know, and I mean this more of a broad stroke, so anyone could take a magnifying glass to wherever, but there's not really um, experts in particular fields today, mm -hmm. besides maybe academia, right? In mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. academia, I mean like maybe in doctoring and being a nurse or whatever, like things that are very praxis oriented, but everything else... It's not really a, like a such thing as, a, as an expert. Mm -hmm. And here's what I mean by that. If you're a student who's like 18 years old and you're going to college mm -hmm. and you want to learn about marketing and media, well, more than likely, you're going to have a professor that worked in marketing and media in the year 2000. Yeah. Right. And so, so many of them are saying like, oh, I'm graduating. And like, we never talked about, besides one homework assignment, we never talked about TikTok once. Yeah. Which is like, That'd be crazy. that's the majority of where influence is right now yeah. held between YouTube and TikTok. Mm. Yeah. And so you have these students going through academia and learning from these experts who are telling you sh the, the, the di like very simple, which are important dynamics, which mm -hmm. are like, here's how you communicate a thought. Here's how you express that thought. Here's how you clearly develop a goal, blah, blah. And you'll learn that in, in comms or whatever else. But yeah. overall, like there's not really an expert at stuff. So yeah. like, if someone comes to a job interview with me and they're like, oh, um, I manage someone's social media account. It has 5 million, you know, Instagram people. I think immediately I think to myself, that's nice. What did you have anything to do with that 5 million thing? Like mm -hmm. you're going to have to show me that you have an expertise behind it. Mm -hmm. And more than likely you won't. Yeah. More likely you won't. So what you have to show me is that you're willing to learn what's yeah. out there and you're willing to do what's out there. And e I mean, even in pastoring in 2024, yeah. like the way you pastor today is very different than the way I had to pastor a decade ago. And mm -hmm. the way you pastor teenagers when I first got in the game 14 years ago is different than the way you pastor teenagers today. Yeah. And so for someone to come in and just be like, yo, I'm, 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 I'm an expert at this. Like how, mm. yeah. you know, like to me, what's more <clears throat> impressive is, Yes, if you have work ethic, yes, if you have some level of experience, yeah, good things. They're very great things. It means you have you have an understanding base level of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. But if you don't know how you don't can't show me how you learn. Mm. Yeah. You know, tell me the last time you implemented an idea that you had no awareness of. Tell me the last time mm. that you learned something that you didn't know about that you you now know. What 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 are yeah. you learning right now? You know, like I'll ask yeah. that stuff in job and what are you learning right now? What what what's either God showing you or what, what's like, what are you learning, learning on yeah. YouTube, whatever. And they go, man, I'm not nothing. I'm really just trying to take care of my life and take care of my wife and kids. I'm like, that's good for you. Yeah. Mm. But that's not going to benefit us moving forward in the sense that in today's age, if you're not learning, you're not, you're not growing and you won't grow and yeah. you won't help, won't help, help an organization grow. So for me, what I've looked at over the past decade is like, who just has a hunger to learn and execute because mm. that's what we live in, in 2024, yeah. that, yeah. the old ways of doing things. Uh, some, some of it's important and understanding the systems on why is it important mm -hmm. is great, but saying, but I think we should just do it that older way. Like yeah. it's going to, it's going to leave you behind. So in Alice, a sense of thinking like, Oh, well, you know, someone may come in with a massive amount of experience. Like they have to define what level of experience that is because not all experience is beneficial experience. Mm, Actually good. nowadays experience in some cases is a hindrance to being successful because you may be locked in, in your experience and say, Oh, my experience is it's worked this way. And to say, well, is it working now? No, but that's all I know. 
Well, okay. Yeah. Well, the matter that you have experienced, <clears throat> you're holding the shit back with your experience yeah. for right. sure. I kind of had this conversation. It was Jermaine and the creative team, and he was saying like, "What matters more?" I can't remember the exact verbiage, but he was like, "What matters more, like your drive or your willingness to like learn something?" Like, wh- you know, comparing it apples to apples, which one would be more or more of value? And everyone kind of had a different take on it, and we kind of wrestled with it. But he was like, "Honestly, that's kind of a trick question because they both matter in different capacities." Because in one space, you could really need to have the drive or experience to know how to do something. But in another capacity, that can be a hindrance to you. Like if you're like, well, we've done it like this for the last 10 years. And you're like, well, that's not how social media is working now. Like you're constantly have to like learning and do new things. And something he told me specific to my position is like when you're a content creator, you kind of have to know a little bit of everything. Like you have to know videography. You have to know your audio. You have to know this and that and the other. And that's been challenging me to like, get out there and learn more things because I'm like, if I don't learn, I'm going to become my own stumbling block because I'm holding myself back from the potential that I could have if I continue to learn, you know, as things yeah. continue to move and grow and at the pace that social media goes, I need to be on it, you know. I have to be an innovator per se. If y'all listen to the last episode, <laughs> you would know what that means, but yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's a crazy world right now for a young professional. Uh, even as we're like doing all these interviews for stuff, I'm just like... Y- it's really eye-opening <clears throat> how young people portray themselves, or people in general, but obviously yeah. we're, in, in, we're interacting with a lot of young people in the professional space, how they want to or feel the need to portray themselves. Mm-hmm. And you're right. The most unattractive thing about a person is claiming expertise. Mm-hmm. Like, typically, and for all yep. the reasons you said, because I was, I was kind of being hard on myself the other day. I was like, what do I even do here? Like, <laughs> I was like, what am I even... Like, who am I? What am I yeah. even good at? I was yeah, like yeah. really going through a thought process. Existential like, crisis. Yeah, I'm like, what? Do, <laughs> yeah. I go through one a Mid-life. month. And I'm just like, what? I, like, honestly, what? I'm like, Tuesday, I have all these things I, I set out to do. And then we get halfway through the day, like come 12 o'clock. And I'm like, I didn't do anything. I, and it's not about tasks, yeah. but achieving momentum to go in a direction. All that to say that right now, like that is going to be the biggest strength is for people's unlearning things. And remaining fluid and willingness mm-hmm. to go in a direction in the blink of an eye and say, I went to I went to school for this and now that don't matter. And call it like Bible students do that all the time, right? Like, because you have to go and do a role at a church where you didn't study any of that. And sometimes not even mm-hmm. use your Bible degree or most of the time, not yeah. even. Use, so, <laughs> you know, yeah. like most cases, right? So it's a crazy world. Like as a young professional, I you know, because I studied music and. That's what I was, because what Alizé was referencing, we do these like creative yep. syncs, these week, these bi-weekly meetings with the creative team. It was about competency or commitment level. It was a it was a play on your doer and steward yeah, teaching because yeah. I wanted to break it down to the team more and just dig into it. But it's a crazy conversation today. Like, I, I get it. Young people or just people in general want a leg to stand on, which is their competency, but they have commitment issues. Yeah. Or vice versa. They have huge commitment below competency. Mm-hmm. So it was like just raising this conversation around the doer and the steward. Yeah. But man, yeah. it's just a crazy world yeah. to be. And a young professional, as a young professional, you, it's really complicating. Yeah. Like the wor- yeah. a workplace is really complicating. And and that, yeah. yeah. I think a quality that stands out, I think you were touching on it. Because my ex-boss used to be so hard on me when it came to this. And she would always say, you need to be resourceful. Because asking questions. So say I, have, I give you a project and you don't know three things about it like go scour the world to figure it out first and then if you really don't know then it's like okay then come to me and ask me but I think that's a quality that like people really need to hone hone into is like being resourceful because it's like you don't want to add more to your boss's plate you want to be able to take off and be able to be like oh you know what I can execute because I'm going to be the person that's going to figure this out you know, so that's why yeah. I have conversations mm. with Alize about it. Like, hey, let's make sure we dial in everything we can. And then if we don't know, then we'll go to Jermaine or then I'll go to Pastor Adam and figure it out. Yeah. But I think being resourceful is so important because you don't want to be that person. It's like asking the simple questions. Well, well, where what website did you go? Or, hey, where do I get this? It's like, well, Google it or try to figure something yeah. out first. Right, you know? right, right. Getting yeah. a directive from somebody. It's your job to figure it out and do it or mm-hmm. else that person should have just done it and maybe they haven't even they don't even know fully how it should be done but you're it's your job to do it so can you can you do it and so really doing that and researching and figuring right. it out and 
being a problem solver more than anything else mm -hmm. um, with anything that's given, you know, even in where your Jermaine even touched on it, you know, going to Bible school for four years and then going to children's ministry f to not do anything that you, yeah. <laughs> you said, yeah. you set out to do. And you're like, okay, well now I got to, my school, uh, they, they never taught me how to deal with volunteers. They never taught me how to, uh, how, how to structurally think about this or whatever. Build a budget. Not like they were, not like they were supposed to necessarily, but like right. it's, it's a whole, it's a whole other vibe, especially going into the church world because most churches are small churches and most churches at the same time have done the same things the same ways oh, forever, forever. Yeah, like yeah, for yeah. so yeah. long yeah. and so it's it's a special place to be at at a church that's that's big right like, like a mega church and then also a church that's constantly trying to do new things and trying to the push the envelope creatively yeah. and trying to push it, you know, and going all these different avenues. And so that's where, that's where it's at. And so it, it's wild. Yeah. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. a wild yeah. time. That, that saying, the original saying we have all heard, like the eye opening one, a jack of all trades mm -mm. is a master of none. Mm -hmm. But then, like the extension of it, but oftentimes better than a master of one. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and it's always like that conversation in music or whatever, like, when I was in music school, it'd be like, oh, I play all these instruments. But the like guys who are just putting their head down studying piano, they they think they're better off. But realistically, now, fast forward 10 years, my friends who play everything have gone further mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. any musician friend that just stuck his head down and just played the piano. Mm -hmm. yeah, or yeah. just like yeah. at the end of the day, it is just objectively better to be better at everything. And what you were saying, you know, because I watched uh, Quentin Tarantino's podcast. He's not a videographer or a cinematographer. Right. He doesn't know how to operate a camera. He doesn't know how to gaff and, and set up lighting. He doesn't. He just knows a vibe he wants, a, a, a feeling he wants to portray, and he puts people in the right place to figure that stuff out. Mm -hmm. But you, because you know, directors are most commonly famous for being the jack of all trades. In, involved in the They whole know process. everything and they could yep. do everything because they've done it. They were this role, that role. Oh, for, wow. But, but Quentin Tarantino, one of the greatest of all time, is like, dude, I don't even know how to. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't even change the intensity of he that has light the right vision, now. Though. Yeah. He just has the vision, and he says, "I just got to hire the right guy. I got to find and catalyze the right people mm -hmm. to yeah. get it." Yeah. And that's really like what what has to. Professionals, experts are important, even in ministry. Like the technician, the graphic designer who has pride in what they do, mm -hmm. the videographer who has pride in what they do is so important. Yeah. Right. So that's not yeah. what I'm saying. I'm not yeah. saying that. Don't. Right. But because those people are so important because somebody needs to be masters of one. Yeah. We need yeah. the technicians in ministry or in any workplace to be like, thank you so much for bringing this to me. But now with a expert eye on this topic, I can elevate it. But yeah, it's just a crazy yeah. conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think what I would think that um, really anyone of any gen generation it stuck out to me a lot when I was I forget when this book came out but Creativity Inc any mm. of you guys ever read it mm. anybody ever read it mm -hmm. you read it I'm reading it right now oh okay yeah yeah so stuck out to me a long time ago when I read it was the CEO what would become the CEO of Pixar but he was being interviewed for oh, the job yeah, and there yeah. was three other guys who were who are being interviewed and they asked him um, they asked him um, who's the best person for this role at that were hiring, which I think at the time it was the CEO or, or president or whatever he became, or it could have been a low role or role lower. But I, I think it was that one because it's been a long time since I read the book. But what stuck out to me was there was three other people interviewing and he said, well, let me tell you what um, all those other three guys are great at. And if that's what Pixar needs, then I think you should go with them. Basically they said, how, why should we go with you? Why, why would you stand out in this mm. role? He said, well, so-and-so would help you guys make money. Mm. He'll make you a lot of money. He's going to be really good at it. He's really good at business. So-and-so would really help you. He's one of the most, brought some of the most innovating, um, you know, animation, blah, 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 blah. And he goes through it and he goes, and then me, um, I'm, re I'm really great at storytelling. And so I would, if I led this company, I would lead it with, and this is a loose paraphrase. You can go read mm. it and fill in. But he goes, but I, if I came on, I would I would tell better I would tell great stories at Pixar. That mm -hmm. would be my focus, and everything else would be would be second. Well, it turns out that that was their heart. That's what they wanted to do. And so um, the man looked at him after he got the offering. He he kind of asked, "What what what made you pick me?" He said, "I had all three of those other guys in the room, and they all said that they were all better than everyone else. There was they said." They said, if we don't, mm. the question was like, if we don't pick you, who would be a great option? And, and every person said, no one, I'm the best. He wow. said, you're the only one that was in the room 
who was willing to give credit to other people, which showed us that you would be a great leader and willing mm. to put the best people in the room, regardless of if that made you be wow. outshined or whatever, whatever that is. Yeah. And so to me, that had always stood out. And I was like, I took that into when I had a marketing company. That's what I took that into wow. to say to when I worked with a client to say, let, let's not talk about how I need to sell myself. Let's talk about what's considered a win to you. How do you want to win? And I'll tell you if I can help accomplish that win mm. or not. And then if I can't, I'll recommend someone else or I'll just say, hey, sounds like you just need a videographer. I'm going to charge you my side to have a videographer. So like, here's the number to a guy. I recommend you just talk to him directly. Mm -hmm. Mm. And by then you, they end up coming back to you for other things yeah. because they're like, hey, that person didn't try to ever steal from me or ever try to. And so mm. I was always trying to just, how do I help accomplish your win? Because if I can help you accomplish your win, by by proxy, I will win. You'll bring business my way or you'll recommend me to a friend. And it will catalyze rather than someone just feeling like I squeezed them for everything. And I think a lot of people who start out for their early jobs or if they're in a job and they're kind of in a plateau, it's because every single day you're showing up to say, how can I get mm -hmm. the most purpose from this role? How can I get the most attention in this role? How can I get the most mm. wins in this role so that other people recognizes me rather than, you know, historically, you know, with me and I get, I get, I really get asked this all the time. I'm, I'm the, I'm the youngest quote unquote mega church pastor in America, you know, with the size of church. And I get asked like, why, why did a guy who was young, mm. um, choose to transition mm -hmm. a large ministry to someone so young at 33, you mm -hmm. know, I'm 33 and we started this at 27 and, you know, I can never answer, you know, my dad, he's told me stuff privately and even towards friends and stuff, but essentially the, what I can liken it to is every single time that my pastor was trying to do something, I would go to him and I'd want to know what's a win to you. How, how not, how can Adam shine or how mm. can I just crush it and kill it and mm. get attention from you? All I wanted to know was what's in your heart. You're the one who hired me. You're the one who pays me. You're the one who keeps me here. So therefore, to me in my head, I've always taken the understanding that like I want you to win. And mm -hmm. so what is a win in your eyes? And then and, and he would consistently tell me, hey, for this thing, this is the win. Man, I just want to reach as many people or for mm. this missions thing. I want to do this or for this. Mm. And I just think to myself, how do I help my pastor win? Mm. And so I felt like he just eventually was like, hey, this guy's got it because I just wanted to serve him so much that he probably felt like, well, he just he'll probably serve other people if I just wow. let him be in charge or whatever mm. that is. Because that's the mentality I take is yeah. what, what that's the first thing I always want to ask. What is a win and how can we equip the team in enough mm -hmm. that is working as a team mm -hmm. to win? And for me, the moment I get a rogue person, I want them off my team. Mm. So that's what... I don't like the most talented person. I like a person, I think, and basketball fans talk about it all the time. I think it was Michael Jordan. The, it was... Um, Pippen. I mean, was, um, oh, Phil, um, uh, who's, Phil, who's the famous Lakers coach? Uh, Phil Jackson. Phil Jackson. Oh. Phil Jackson. He coached Michael Jordan too, right, I think? Mm -hmm. It's when he went to Michael and he said, hey, Michael, you score X amount of points a game, but if you score less, this many yeah. less and pass the ball more, you know, we'll win a championship. And he mm. said, he said, okay. You know, so it was, do you want to shine or do you want the team to shine? Do you want to win a championship? And and for me, I wow. I do not like people who just want to shine. It's not mm -hmm. my jam. It's not my vibe. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not my language I speak. I'd rather win as a team mm -hmm. yeah. than just like totally shine. And when you're totally shine, everyone relies on you to score all the points, to mm. the fill all the season, stadium yeah. seats, to, you know, but when it's the team, like when the Bulls are winning, wow. you know, Michael could still be on the bench and some people be disappointed, but overall, because the team's winning, er everyone's going to be in the audience. Wow. Yeah. But you could go to a franchise where they have one star player. If he's not on the, if he's not on the bench or if he's on the bench, ticket sales hit because mm. nobody's yeah. there to see a team. They're there to see a player. Wow. And like a young person or anyone, if they're just like, man, I just always want to be that star player well that means you got to be ready to get all the flack you may get all the praise but you also get all the flack yeah. mm -hmm. you may get all the you know hoorahs but you also get all the punishment you know like right. from, so for me i was like I, I don't ever want all the weight to to fall on me and i mm -hmm. think that's the 
that's how I've stacked my team over the years. So some person, wow. mm-hmm. I've had people say, hey, I've been here this long and I've done this. I'll be like, man, but you, I don't care. You're not a team player. Right. I see the way you talk to people. <laughs> yeah. That don't mean nothing to me. Yeah. I don't mm-hmm. care. I don't care if you can attract 10,000 people in a room. Like, yeah. if, if people in your circle can't respect you, wow. then it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter to me that you can you can rock out. Right. For sure. Right. People want to. People need to be able to be around you and want to be around you. That's yeah. what matters. People need to be like, man, I'm excited to share this idea with him because if it's a better idea, I know he'll take it. Mm. Rather than right. just going like, no, just, 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 go share. Yeah. And then that's when people go, well, I'm going to go somewhere else and share it myself. Or in our church world, someone says, I'm going to go plant my own church because mm. they yeah. felt like for so long they'd go to their leader with wow. all these ideas or a heart. Hey, why don't we try this? And if the leader says, eh, it's not in the vision, get out of the way. You know, like then they go, well, maybe I need to. Maybe I need to go be bo- the boss wow, man, right, you know, right. and then they go and then they, they, sometimes it works well, sometimes it doesn't, but it's because the reason they did it wasn't really a healthy reason. It was a reason that the leader probably could have been, and it's that old adage, people don't leave companies, they leave bosses or they leave managers. Oh, that's and, so mm. You know, true. and I think a lot of that is true, you wow. know, yeah. um, I think it does happen without, it's not fully true, mm. but, but it's very true that a lot of people, if a leader stagnates someone, wow. but to me, you could be stagnated if you're, if you're not presenting your ideas or desiring for good reason. Right. Like, oh, are you trying to make the company better or are you just trying to get a win to get the next promotion? Those are two totally different right. things. It's like, I'm so mad they didn't take my idea. Well, where was your idea from? Well, because I knew that I knew that at the end of the year I could go to my uh, review and bring that good idea up yes. and that would give me... Well, right, you know, right. No, but if you knew it was a great idea because it was going to help the vision of the company, then wow. yeah, that that you know that's that's something that's worth fighting for. Right. And so it comes down to the heart and why for you, sure. why you're yeah. fighting for the attention. It, it kind of it's kind of almost like built into like the American DNA to be super individualistic and thinking about the self and like we we're the country. I forgot what I heard. The, we're the country that uh, that re- that was too much for for Britain and they gave us away. And then we we're the country <laughs> that France gave a statue to, like like a wild situation. But I, yeah, I recently yeah. rewatched Queen's Gambit. And uh, they talk about like in the 50s, like mm-hmm. how Russia, Russians just dominated chess. And even, you know, in it's a fictional story, but in real life, Bobby Fischer, that was his big fight in the 50s was trying to defeat the Russian mm-hmm. uh, chess champion. And they attribute a lot of their success to the fact that they would play chess, a one on one sport as a team sport. And mm. so they would get in. They would get in rooms, and they would discuss this. I, this, he would just beat another guy, and to go into his next match. Now he's helping me and mm-hmm. giving me ideas and helping see if see if my I'm giving him my ideas. And he's Crazy. like, no, this is how you make it better and stuff like that. And so the Americans had to start to get out of that mindset uh, yeah. because if you go to like, and they they show the contrast in the show, <laughs> uh, but in American tournaments, she's walking through like the hallway, seeing everybody preparing for the tournament, the next game, and everybody's by themselves in their own room. And then she goes to Russia and she goes into the as she goes past a room in Russia and it's a big group of people yeah. all in front of chessboard all trying to figure masters. it out because yeah. to win to really be the best and to be the greatest it has to be a team effort it can't just be an individual now right. Magnus yeah. Carlsen whoever that's just the standard now you have your team and you assemble your team and that's how you yeah. achieve the greatest success in a right. sport that's literally one on one. Yeah. Which is why, right, right. and I think also like for individuals like that, it it would to them they'd also the reason why they're doing it, it's also a win for their nation, right? So there was a bigger mm. picture on why they mm. wanted to win, not just because it'll put me on the map. It's th- those were very those are very nationalistic countries. So the nationalism mm. was we're all going to help each other because if I lose, as long as Russia wins, I'm good. Yeah, and, right. and I think that works if you work for anyone. Mm-hmm. It's if you can work for the greater vision of whatever you're a part of. Then you will get you you will get your right recognition, and then if not, you're going to gain a lot of experience where someone else can appreciate you later on. Yeah. But yeah. but like you have to view it as a broader nature than even people of faith. Like it's it's that win of like you know Jesus talks about someone plants, someone waters, someone grows. It's like yeah. you know when you're talking about sharing your faith, it's that. I got to view this in a broader sense outside of just winning right now. Like, oh, well, I didn't win my friend of the Lord. It's like, yeah, but you planted a seed or yeah, you watered it or whatever. You don't always have to have the fruit. You don't always have to have the glory. You don't always have to have the win. Like that shouldn't be the biggest piece of why what drives us. And getting credit is so um, not, it's such a short term satisfaction versus a really winning idea. I was listening to Jeff Bezos on Lex Freeman's podcast and he said, he was like, Every inventor, the goal is you want to create something that 
you're not credited for because it's such a dope idea. And he was like, customer reviews. I don't get credited for that. He's like, I founded that idea. Mm. That's what Amazon was built on. Now there's billion dollar organizations. That's that's all they do. And they don't say credit to Amazon or credit to those yeah. guys at Amazon or, or Jeff Bezos. People just think that's a thing. Yelp exists as customer review platform. Jeff Bezos founded that whole concept. Yeah. So I was like, whoa, it was an mm. eye-opening thing. He's like, so I laugh because I never get credited for it. But I, if, to me, that means I did a good job mm-hmm. at creating that thing because it was something that didn't need to apply credit yeah, to somebody. Yeah. And I was like, dude, that's a trippy concept. Getting credit's so outdated because it will outdate you Yeah. versus, you know, coming up with those concepts. Well, for the guys mm. who get, for the individuals, guys or girls who want all the credit, it also means that you get all the criticism too. Mm. So, mm. so you, you have to be mentally prepared, which I'm also, I'm not. Uh, I'd rather the team win because I'm not a person that takes criticism well. So it sits on me a long time and I think about mm. it a long time. And so even being someone like, you know, if our stuff ever goes viral or whatever, like I don't look at the comments because I don't, I don't, I don't do well with, with criticism. Then I start thinking, you know, oh my gosh, I do need to do this or that or whatever. Mm-hmm. It seeps in you where other people like, they don't, they don't care about criticism. Doesn't bother them, which God bless them. I wish I was more like that. But those, in, like, if you want all the glory, it also means you get all the flack, you get all the heat. And wow. I've always just been the one who's like, I don't want all that. Mm-hmm. You know? And yeah. I've sat in that position before where I've gotten all the flack and I've got, and it, it's not fun. The, the claps and the applause happen at a disproportional amount as what criticism does because people mm. people offer applause very rarely mm. people wow. offer offer criticism every yeah, day yeah youtube comments. and so <laughs> and so that. for for if you're if you live for applause then more than likely you're also living for the criticism and you're gonna get you're gonna see the criticism way more than you see the applause. And so, like for me, whenever I have someone that's like, "Hey, you probably hear this all the time. I just want to encourage you for blah 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 blah." And I'm like, I'm always like, first of all, whether I hear it all the time or not, there's definitely a lot more criticism mm. in the outside world, not in my sphere. In the outside world, it happens more. So any little bit of encouragement is nice because there's also a lot of discouragement out there. Mm. But I think a lot of people just assume like. Oh, you're, you you know, if, if something has some type of bit of quote unquote success in people's eyes, they're like, you hear this all the time. You guys are doing great. And it's like, mm. no, you, you, I hear it probably far less to the amount that you think probably I hear it, which I'm thankful for, but man, I like open up my comments right now and you're going to see way more from the things that go viral. You're going to see way more arguing yeah. than yeah. you are going to just see someone just say, Oh man, Adam, you're the man. And then I'm going to look at them and be like, Oh yeah, yeah. I'm going to, you know, like I'm not going to, I'm going to see maybe one of those to every 20 wow. of get this guy off the microphone. Right, right, you know, right, right, this right, is why right, podcasts should yeah, be yeah, exactly. right away. Get way I, more right, of that kind a, of stuff. <laughs> it's a crazy conversation because you know, in like the worship space, for example, people fake humble a lot and they, all glory to God, man. Hey, man, you killed that song. No, it wasn't me, man. All it glory was to all... God. But then yeah, when something yeah, goes yeah. wrong, they're hard on themselves. Mm-hmm. And they're actually taking credit for mm-hmm. the bad. Mm-hmm. And so what do you think should happen for somebody who is operating in the gifts, for example? <laughs> yeah. And, and they put in a lot of work and they crush something, so they're going to take credit. But when they also botch it and mess up, what do they do? Do they own that? What is the right, what is the fair route to take? I could just say what the route I take. We just talked about in the last Beyond I do a little bit, not exactly this, but it's loosely the shameless same. Plug. It's Yeah, yeah, shameless plug. <laughs> but it's essentially like, let's just say in my case, when someone says, man, that was, an, uh, that was an incredible sermon, blah, 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 blah. You know, a lot of people may answer, oh, that was all the Lord or whatever. I, it, no, like I, I, the Lord, the Lord gifted me and I also spent time with the Lord and I also ha- had ideas going into that message. Mm-hmm. So yes, without God, I'd be meaningless. But at the same time, um, it, the Lord, the Lord partnered with me in the spirit, allowed me to be able to share this. So mm-hmm. uh, now I may say all glory to God or whatever, but again, that's a, f- a lot of times that's a false humility, for not sure, all the for time. Sure. So what I'll tend to say is, man, praise the Lord. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Like that, that's usually what my, it, yeah. yeah, like I don't say, oh, no, 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 it's all God. Don't give me no credit. Yeah, give yeah. it to God. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm, I'm just like, thank you. I, I yeah. really put a lot of effort yeah. in presenting the message with the angle that I did. And, and I do, at the end of the day, I believe it's all God who came in mm. with that inspiration, but I'm also not going to say, that you had um, nothing to do with yeah, any, right. anyone else could have came up there and shared the same exact thing. They wouldn't have, right. you know, right, right. they would have shared their own version of whatever they were doing. And so I'm going right. to say, thank you so much. Praise God. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad God did speak to you, 
but you know, I really pre and if I sung and yeah. they were like, Oh, what an incredible worship experience. I'd be like, I'd say, man, praise God. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm you know, and in my head, I'm, I'm so glad I'm gifted yeah. and God does get all the glory, but you don't have to say that every time right. to, to almost push it away. But then also, cause when you do that, then you'll take all the criticism and all For the sure, negativity right. as well and be like, Oh, I, yesterday I heard I was amazing this today. I, you know, yes. kind of stuff like that. That's, that's biblical though. Cause even like, cause it's, it's why we're attributing it to like, you know, using our our own gifts, but how much more so for somebody that's guided by the Holy Spirit writing down the scriptures because Peter makes the comment about Paul of how his his wor- uh, what he writes is hard to understand and people twist it like they do the other scriptures. Mm-hmm. And so Peter's yeah. attributing like yeah. Paul, what Paul's writing as scriptures to himself and what he's thinking about. But obviously we ultimately know, yeah, that's mm. coming from the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So he doesn't say, yeah, God's hard to understand. Like, no, Paul writes some stuff that the people twist up and yeah. and that it, it, sometimes some of his stuff is it could be hard to understand, but they do that to the, uh, all of other God's words too. So it's not it's it's not, you know, wow. uh, you don't have a lack of humility for accepting something even though you're using a gift because That's the way per you presented it. Right, you know? exactly, because yeah, yeah. exactly like what you're saying, the Holy Spirit used you to and you were the vessel by which it was going through, but not every vessel's the same vessel yeah. it's just not and That's you know true. if not if you know and god will use whoever he needs to use but that person is still using like this you could still be a night like this is a nice vessel <laughs> yeah. Yeah. great yeah. vessel that we use like this you can say this is a great bottle and it's okay to say that yeah because yeah. <laughs> yeah. but well we really care about the water but right this bottle was nice that yeah I, th- I, that I recently oh, i can't remember it because i wanted to remember it but i recently saw someone's comment not on anything of ours but just in general and someone basically was correcting someone who was using like a personal pronoun and basically in the comments they said something like, um, oh, stop, it's all God who, you know, who gets the credit for this or something. Like someone was Tough, yeah. presenting something someone did or something in the comment, oh, it's all God who did it. And, and then I was just like, it, it, yes, theologically, yes, but practically... You know, we don't say God parted the Red Sea. We say Moses parted the Red Sea. Mm. And then when you go into theology school, yes, we know by the power of God, mm-hmm. yeah. right. but it's not an erroneous statement to say Moses parted the Red Sea. Right. Uh, uh, the Lord used him. When we say mm-hmm. Moses split the rock and water came out, uh, like it's not wrong to say that. Yeah. But theologically, we know, yes, he hit it and then God split it and then water yeah. came out. But we know that like that, that is, that does not take anything away from God. The fact that God enabled someone, it still meant that they had their own personal will that aligned with what God was wanting to do. So therefore it is a correct statement to say, man, that person sung that song great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Song that song, sang that song great. Mm-hmm. You don't have to say, man, God sung that song through them. Great. Like you don't have to have all those all quiet. We, we know that, you yeah. know, and, and as someone yeah. may not know that as they get closer to God, they'll realize that, you know, and it's good in discipleship mm-hmm. to teach someone new in the faith, like, hey, these gifts, these abilities you have, For it's sure. all God. Like that's important in the discipleship process, but to just, you don't have to always add those qualifiers in order to somehow be to theologically justify. correct. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Like you don't want it, 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 like it's not on you at the end of the day to even have delivered that it's sermon like, yeah, that yeah. you studied for. It's for like hours. all of a sudden, right, right when you walk up, you just like get a download and your eyes gloss <laughs> over and God starts to do the rest. You know, it's like, no, right. you're still, I can, that also means that then I can screw up a sermon. Right. You right, know, right, like right. if I screwed something up, then people would be like, oh yeah, that was all you. Botched, you were in your you flesh today. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Darn, so when it's good, yeah. it's all God, but when it's bad, it's all my flesh like come on yeah like, that's not fair. you know like yeah yeah it's fair enough to say when it's good it, it's that person and the god is using them and even when it's botched god was using them and yet they still were human for you know sure. like that right. there's that reality as well <laughs> for sure yeah i love that what you said pretty much like you your message is done with you you do it with god god partners with you you mm-hmm. know that's the best way to put it is like because we believe the what's happening on the pulpit and the word of God is being spoken and articulated and extrapolated like that is the word of God being spoken and speaking to prophetically people and what they're going through. And that's how you can be talking to 10,000 people, but everybody takes meaning, even though we're not all going yeah. through the exact same thing. So right. it's a trippy thing like yeah. that yeah. happens in the church. And God's doing that when it's presented. Crazy. You know? Yeah, right. it's crazy. Like, like he's initiating that, right? Um, um, so then therefore it... To a degree, like, yeah, both are attaining credit. The person who put yeah. the work in and they're presenting right. it, 
but now the Holy Spirit is making it make sense to everyone. And so he, he does get all the glory. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Any human who's trying to get the glory is lying to themselves. So right. that part's true, but you don't have to say that to show that you're <laughs> humble. You know, For sure. Like, right. you, can re- you can say thank you, you know, and that is a humble statement yeah. as well. Uh, uh, who, who was it? Is it... Uh, was it on Moses or was it John? The one, who's the one who pinned? Oh, I know John said the one most loved by Jesus, but who's the writer that pinned the most humble man that ever lived in the in, in the Bible or the the hum- most man who walked with great humility? The least of these or something. It, it, no. I think it was Moses or something. Someone defined themselves as humble, <laughs> but they're the ones who wrote the book. You know, it's like that's so funny. How do you do that? Well, you that well was. you do it when you understand that God gets glory, but you can also pin to yourself that you are a man of great humility. Wow. <laughs> you know, yeah. like I've said that before. Yeah. a place like, oh, I'm, I, I'm a very timid and a humble guy. And people are like, oh, what a humble statement. And it's like, you could call yourself, you could say that you have humility. That's not not humble to mm-hmm. say that, you yeah. know, because it's, it's yeah. in the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? 22. yeah. John, John says that he's the most loved of God, you know, like that's right, right, not, right, that right. can actually still be a humble statement if it's not said with pride, you For know, sure. mm-hmm. right, and it's right. said actually with a pure heart. You could say those things. Yeah, exactly. You know? like, Everybody wants the David statement where you're like, that was a man after God's own heart or, yeah, yeah, or whatever yeah, yeah. it is, yeah. which is, which is why, which is why of, yeah. of itself. But it's yeah. why that we do that. And it's it's I I don't think it's shamed upon in any it's it's a wild statement, but almost any Christian circle, any Christian denomination, whether you're coming from like a reformed or even on our end, a charismatic end of even putting elevating celebrity preachers. You know what I mean? Like we have no problem Mm. and nobody Mm -hmm. has any problem saying John MacArthur is a great preacher. Yeah, <laughs> you know or what I mean. T.D. Jakes or he, Tony yeah, Evans. They, or, they killed that sermon. Yeah, Priscilla but, Shire. But, yeah, yeah, it's something different. Or Charles Spurgeon was one of the best right. communicators on the planet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, pff, yeah, everybody. <laughs> his name is, his <laughs> nickname's <laughs> the Prince of Preachers. Prince of preachers. <laughs> so yeah. like, yeah. Jesus is the King of Preachers. <laughs> yeah, that's why Spurgeon's <laughs> the, the Prince. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, exactly. there, and there, you know, like, because one thing I really love historically is how like the Catholic Church commissioned artists. And Mm-mm. and musicians, mm-hmm. like whether or not they're atten- whether or not they were practicing Christians, right at that time, that's what Christianity yeah. was. Whether or not they were practicing Christians, going to church every Sunday and and practicing their faith, the the Catholic Church said, "You have a gift from God. Mm-hmm. Can you give us? A, can you give God an offering? Yeah. That's a dope. Yeah, that's like a dope situation. Like h- having this understanding that something is uh, value to God." And he given you natural gifts, can you give it back? And then it's always that conversation because creatives always ha- like to have it where, are you doing it for God or with God? Because mm. one is wrong and one is not. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. I like, never heard that. Got him. Yeah, yeah they, they say that. Like, I don't want to do ministry for Jesus. I want to do ministry with Jesus. And it's like, man, like, when I'm putting turkeys in this, in this trunk, like... <laughs> Yeah, when they say it's not about making disciples, it's about being a disciple. Yeah, yeah, you're just like, <laughs> like hey, bro, like, both are this very so real. Yeah. <laughs> so, I hate those sayings. Yeah, I was thinking <laughs> about corrective it. Corrective sayings yeah. as if like you're saying something that's never been said yeah, before. Yeah, I'm like, well, Michelangelo <laughs> doing, new under the sun. <laughs> yeah, Michelangelo <laughs> doing the creation of Adam, <laughs> like... Yeah, bro. Who cares? It's dope. Like it turned out crazy. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, was in the, he went in the kitchen. On <laughs> right, and bro. Yeah. Bro was that's cooking. Just, yeah. Like so, it's just. I, a, I think that's just the different perspective. Creatively, it's the different perspective on, you know, deciding does God deserve glory here on earth or is it only for heaven? Uh, because that's what the Catholic. That's the difference between the Catholic churches. Mm. Is that is that they believe God's glory is, and it's changed over the years, but. It, God's glory is worthy to be seen here on earth mm. because they're all millennials. So they believe that God's kingdom will come practically as time progresses rather than us. We believe, you know, more of the pen, pro- Protestant is kind of, you know, there's a stop in time. Jesus comes, takes us to heaven, yeah. which regardless, either of the eschatologies you take, God's glory is worthy of here. And the way they view it is, is through, they, they haven't mm-hmm. modernized it, um, but they in the days of Michelangelo and Da Vinci and stuff like that, the idea was that the church, the capital C church deserves to have the best innovators, thinkers, artists, because that's where God's glory is. God Mm -hmm. is a God of creativity and life. So therefore the most life giving things and the most creative things should be coming out of the church. Whereas today we, and even the Catholic church, it's almost like they 
went back, they, like stuck themselves in yeah. a time machine in the year 1500 and like paused there. Mm. And then, you know, besides the, the hollow app, which was a response <laughs> right. of pray.com, not wanting the, to allow the Catholic church in. That's why they created the <laughs> hollow app. And so, uh, don't quote me on it, but, uh, <laughs> Mark Wahlberg's going to be exactly. at your house. Like, <laughs> but that is why. Back. And so, and so they're trying to do stuff, but they're kind of playing catch up on a lot of stuff yeah. like that, which mm. because they took a Super Bowl ad with Mark Wahlberg and stuff like that. Yeah, but yeah. that's their and attempt Jonathan to Pumi. catch up on uh, to catch up on uh, on on creative things yeah, again yeah, or whatever, yeah, yeah. rather than what would have happened if they just you right, know right they kept going yeah, yeah seven hundred years they ago we, they, just, goodness, they, they dialed know? in their vibes seven hundred years yeah ago. they stopped that's, that's, it. Like, hey, that's crazy it. Thing, you know like bro. that's it art and creativity <laughs> right. stops in fifteen oh four you know it's right. like mm-hmm. rather rather than you you probably mostly have more of the non denom they're like Martin Protestant Luther evangelicals left, left who are doing that today yeah right yeah, yeah yeah once Martin Luther created the spliff you yeah. know uh, uh, that's that's why they stopped there's a dope culture in the church yeah there's a dope culture in the church even in in Sunday's best in the gospel culture, like mm-hmm. get where your best fit for God. That's a dope concept. Yeah, like what's big in the black church? That's yeah. the purple drapes and Hats. carpet and gold and golden chairs. It, it, you know, some of it have some of it's been abused, but for the most part, the the, the, the inception of it was a really authentic place, which yeah. was which was this building. Though the building doesn't matter, but it is. It is uh, um, an expression of God's glory and His kingdom, and these colors represent the royalty of God yeah. and, and the holiness of God, and all these things like that, which are all meant. I mean, I, I remind people all the time, like, if, if and it'll happen one day when the Jews go to do it again. But it's like mm-hmm. when when Solomon built the temple, that thing was obscene. <laughs> you know, like right. the amount of gold and mm-hmm. jewels that were on those buildings would 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 make yeah. you know anyone you think today that's gaudy. Like it, yeah, it would, yeah, yeah. When <laughs> when the Jews go to rebuild the temple in Israel today in our age, the first thing on the media the media is going to do is how the people Jewish people in Israel are doing wasteful spending on building this temple because yeah. it's if they build it to the way it's going to be you know like this menorah that's golden and all these other things like that if they're using it all the same ways or if they're trying to do it like second second temple time period so like historically within wow. within the old the new testament is this idea of um spaces and arts and things being given the best versions mm-hmm. to glorify God it's just mm-hmm. kind of American consumerism has kind of deflowered it in a way because then it became capitalistic in nature yeah. rather than, mm-hmm. right. you know, an expression of one's own heart and people's desire. And even ministry, like ministry leaders, if you will, they're really known for being, well, they they think they're being resourceful, but they're just being like frugal in some of the worst ways. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, in ministry, like the way ministries operate where you're like, okay, and this is like a, we're, we're like a 3% of the thing, but ministries who need budgets, who need to have appropriate spending in areas just to look decent, let alone yeah. look cheap and ran down. And you're like, what's going on here? Like mm. uh, ministry friends or whatever. What, what a crazy concept that like spending no money is being resourceful, yeah. but you're not actually doing a good thing when you do that, when you don't maintain something, when you don't care about something. And spend the appropriate resources to maintain. You get, you yeah, know, I get what you're saying. It's a trippy yeah, concept that yeah. that happens in the church, but like ancient church, they're like, bro, we had to ball out on that, <laughs> on that marble. Yeah, we're all like, because it's gonna repair <laughs> itself for the next yeah. five hundred years. You know, like, and to and to them, and to them, that express that expresses our community. You know. Um, which is where like a lot of the, a lot of, that's where a lot of thinking is black church when they, mm. when they want their pastor to dress well and all that. It's not even always comes from pastoral, the pastor abusing finances. It comes from a belief that your pastor represents you in the community. Mm. And so like in a lot of the historic black churches, your pastor dressing well or, or, or being well to, to the community it represented, that is our capacity of what we strive for. Mm. And he represents us in the community. Wow. That's historically what it would be. Now in a white church or another church that they, there's no, they have no concept of that. Their pastor isn't the representative of the community. They them themselves is the representative in the community. But in those type of communities, that's the way it is. Right. And so, 
you just you just wonder in a sense of not now taking out that side of things, but to what you said is like if if a church community started caring more for what their building looked like and what looked like, how much more would people have the capacity to want to give into something mm. to do the greater good that you're trying to do? You know, you have some pastors that are like, oh, we have this feeding center, we're putting all our money there, but we're fighting every every month to even take care of that and pay the water bill. Mm. Whereas rather it's like like why don't you try and take care of the place you guys gather? Wow. People will appreciate it. And then mm-hmm. people will give more generously in which then can feel this, this really impactful hands and feet Jesus thing that you're trying to do. Wow. You know, like they, those both can happen simultaneous. I, when a woman came to me one time and said it, cause we were doing a big, and we are doing a big courtyard project. And, right. And she said, why, why don't you give all that money to the poor? The church is fine. We don't need shading. <laughs> and I said, well, first of all, you know, People all the time do kitchen renovations, they repaint their house, they add a room addition. Why? Uh, Because they want to beautify their space. They want to make it nicer, more comfortable, whatever Mm -hmm. it is. I go, so us doing shading also doesn't take away from the fact that we can't go and help the poor. Like, we can do both. It's not one or the other. Yeah, Yeah. like, and at first she didn't really understand it, and as I started, so I said, I said, so uh, here's what I encourage you to do. The next time you're going to do a project in your house you should give all that money to the poor. Mm. And when I said that, it was almost like it didn't compute. And I said, because Mm. you personally in your own household is no different than the church. Right. If that's a conviction of yours, then it ought to translate not just into the church you attend, it translates into your own life. And so, you know, theoretically, you should be driving a 1990 car that, you know, is just barely, like you should be living at the bare bare minimum so that you can give all of your excess to those in needs. But if there's any amount of luxury that's in your life at all then you understand that you could operate both. There's a sense where you can you can help people and you can help food and clothe people, which we do every single week. We have one of the largest feeding distribution mm-hmm. centers in the world. I go, and I can put shades over our members while they're watching church outside. Like I, I can, right, I can right, do right, both. Right. I can't, wow. don't need to not yeah. do that anymore because that somehow has seen luxurious. You know, yeah. like it, it's um, having seen, outdoor shading is not... Yeah. You know, there's no in that way, and there's no advocate for the church in that sense, except the leaders who end up looking bad when they have these visions to say, "Let's make our members more comfortable," because they spend an hour and a half outside in the courtyard, and in the summer they're Talking getting sunburned and their kids and are running like, around, and, and yeah, they're holding the, their and Bible instead, over yeah, their head. Yeah, and, it's crazy. You know, like yeah. one of the most interesting because you know when I was driving for Lyft, <laughs> yeah. I was ta- like, I always ask people what they do, and one of the most interesting jobs I ran into was this lady who she was a lawyer, but her job was to represent executives and companies Mm -hmm. and fight for their benefit package. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So a a CEO will call her and say, hey, I'm about to have my board thing and they're about to audit why I have a jet or why I get a $10,000 car allowance. They're going to do that. Mm -hmm. Can you help me justify? And and, and that was Mm -hmm. her job. And I was just like, dude, that's crazy. She goes, yeah, sometimes it's ridiculous, but sometimes it's not. But that's my job is to make it fair and figure it out and represent these CEOs or whatever have you. I was like, what a crazy job. But she was just saying a lot of it is their quality of life because they're never not working. Mm. So they're on a jet taking meetings nonstop on the phone. I sit with them and watch them. So they want a jet. They want a private jet so that right after that meeting, they could take a nap. Right after that thing. So she was like, yeah. this quality of life aspect, so they continue to run at a high capacity. And I was like, not that the church needs private jets, but I'm saying <laughs> that concept, <laughs> but no. that concept that our members need to be taken care of while they're here and while they're just being in our rooms and in our hallways so that it's not a strain, it's something that reinvigorates them, that, that catalyzes them. Because go back to that Sunday's best concept, what those members look like when they're happy and in the community right after church. Like, I haven't been to a restaurant after, on a Sunday, right after a first service, let's say, yeah. for example. But what does the community look like when people are on their Sunday's best mm-hmm. and their attitude yeah. is their Sunday's best? Yeah. And they just left church happy versus like sunburnt and sweating. I like, couldn't wait to get out of there. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah, just, yeah. you know, that concept. It's just inspired. Yeah. And yeah, how does it yeah, pay yeah. dividends? We can't really track it, but there's something yeah, there. Right. Or, for sure. For or sure. Even so, all of these. And, give it, and give it like, and there may be someone who's not doing financially well. And being in our church campus would be their only act of getting Escaping. air conditioning wow. all right. month. All right. wow. You know, right. like there's elements people don't, and people tell me that, like, man, it's this is my thing. oasis. 
Like right. wow. this beautiful campus is like this. Is not how my life looks. So when I come here, it wow. inspires me. I come here. There's amenities that are here at this church that aren't even at my apartment complex. You know, it's like right. wow. they feel that way, and so then they leave inspired and they say, God. I am worth more. I can do more because my if my church is run down, then I would say I'm a pro- I am a product of my environment. Mm-hmm. I'm, like my my church could barely pay his bills, so of course I could barely pay my bills. And, wow. and our church does help people in in certain areas of financial, food, all that stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And so they're able to even get a hey, you know we have lawyers that come every quarter and give them free legal advice and legal clinics and all these things like that. And so. There are things we're trying to do to help people come Mm. out of poverty, come out of institutional poverty and stuff, adjunct poverty. But there's also that reality that for them, this is the only escape that they're going to have all week or all month, whatever it is. Right. And so having not not um, not extravagance, but excellence, because those Mm -hmm. are two different things. Wow. Um, You know, having a private jet is probably going to be an extravagance. Right. Um, all that kind of stuff like that. But, but in the sense of having really nice shading with l- little fans in them and keep you cool and right. little speakers and like, that's not extravagance. That's just, man, this is excellent. And I feel mm. comfortable when I come here. I feel, I, you know, I feel even better than I do at home. So therefore this does feel like home to me. And like, wow. right. to me that, that, that is, that is what the difference. I mean, at least that's what we strive to do is like really balance the budget. But you know, also being at a place where we also make people every, like your kids are going to feel like they're a million bucks and they're having mm. fun. And, you know, I've, I've told people before, I, I meet people all the time who cannot afford to go to Disneyland and they genuinely be believe bringing their kids to children's church at abundant is their kids visiting Disneyland once a wow. week, mm-hmm. you know, right. Cause they'll, it'll, you know, they won't be able to afford it for 10 years. And so right. there's that idea where like you are often giving people, Wow. Um, if your church reaches all socioeconomic classes, right? If they can do that, a lot of times you're you're giving people something they would never get otherwise. Like our church has the nicest, a nicer used to. Now there's ni- nice parks coming around, but for the longest, our church had one of the nicest playgrounds you could get in our entire, you know, mm, county. Right, you, know, right, right. you know, like <laughs> so it's like wow. your kids get, you know, your kids right. get even better. That so it shows them they're they're worth more. Their future could be a bit, bit brighter yeah. and better than it than you wow. ever could yeah. dream. You know, yeah, yeah. the yeah. playground still and, pops off. The pa- this uh, does, this past e- this past yeah. Easter, um, not the not Easter. I think Palm Sunday, we we just took we just all we did uh, were for the it was for the kindergarten class. You turned it into a farm, we took, right? We took. No, no, no. We oh. we went outside and we did like outside praise and worship, and then yeah. we took them to the plate. You brought animals. You brought you guys brought for like good a for, good, for, for good, good Friday, Friday. Oh, for good Friday, okay. yeah, yeah, okay. petting zoo. Okay. But they did outside yeah. praise and worship, and then they went to the playground. Yeah, and so many kids were like, "This is the best day." Ever, yeah, 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 and they're playing on the playground, and I was like, that was easy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly. and it's not just for the church yeah. to look good, but like, I mean, you guys notice in our witnesses on Sundays after everything's over, it's like about community. Like, we specifically task our photographers like capture the community that's out there because you can see either Mm -hmm. people meeting new people and next you know that friendship turns into something more where Mm, now they're going to a bible study or now they're getting baptized because so and so they met out there so it's just not about looking good it's for the congregation at the end of the day so yeah yeah Yeah. so many stories come from that all right everybody great episode as always we never come in with (laughs) Play. We throw some videos in the switcher, but we're like, if we get to them, we will. If not, if we not, got through what? Okay. One? Two? One. Yeah, one? Yeah, yeah. one. But most of the time, we don't even get one video. So uh, I know. We got one. There you go. We got one video. All right, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your week or day or whenever you're watching this. God bless you. Yes. Bye.